said is a note. Today on the vlog, I will be talking about my first tools. If you are like me and you need tools to build some bikes for your motorcycle maintenance, then this video you will find very useful because I will ask Simon how to spot good enough quality tools, especially if you never heard of a brand before, how to inspect them when they arrive and how to decide if they're worth to keep it or you should send them back. Also, it's a treat for everyone who's watching my channel and watching my builds because at the end, to demonstrate the tools in the real environment, we will start building the new build. It's a very informative and very good video for everyone who are choosing tools or maybe want to upgrade or like just need new tools. We're talking about Rothable tools that I have. I didn't have to borrow many of your tools. No, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Was it? <laughs> yes, thanks. This is kind of like the basics, yeah. a very good starting point. Yeah, yeah. All bar a set of screwdrivers but you've got a multi-screwdriver in here anyway. Mm. But yeah, this 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 will definitely get you out of, uh, definitely do most things, this kit. Yeah. So first question is, what do you think of my of my kit? I, I actually genuinely think it's good quality. Um, it's a good finish and what they've put in it, they haven't put loads of, loads of shitty bits. It's, it's, they've thought about what they've put in the kit and uh, yeah, I like it. You approve it? Yeah, I you do approve, approve it. You approve it at yes. Customs for yes. me to have it? 100%. Also, at the moment, it ends on Monday, on Halloween. I'm doing a giveaway of this set with Louise Moto on my Instagram. Just go when you'll see my face with nicely presenting tools, black and white picture, click on that. You only have to comment and follow Louise Moto and then you can win one of these sets. All the details is in the post, so good luck with that. Who is trying to win? You can't, you can't. Because you are kind of like involved in that. Imagine, imagine if you would win. Well, I'd tell everybody, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, but like... <laughs> I'd tell everyone, like, no. Moto, Rather Wild Tools. <laughs> yeah, but like if you would win, nobody would believe that it's, I'd, it, it I'd, was like I'm actually... I'm not being funny, like... but I'd be happy to win this. Yeah, but you can't. I can't win it. All right. So, so like, well, one lucky person. So you're is... not just wasting your time helping me to to do the review. No. But also, you can't even win the set. No. Unfortunately. I'll br I'll brought you biscuits. Yes, I saw. I saw the biscuits. Is that okay? Yes, it's fine. Okay. Does that cover? <laughs> not all right, really. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right. Right, what questions have you got so, that I can okay. answer, hopefully? Hopefully. So the first question that I have is how to spot good tools. Like me personally, I can spot quality stuff from very shitty stuff. I'm not like specifying tools. I'm not a mechanic, lifetime mechanic. Uh, I only yeah. start learning things. Yeah. But I can like, I, I take it and I can feel that it is nice heavy weight i can see that the metal is yeah nice i can i can feel that the handle is comfortable it's thoughtful to have like a uh, non slippy yes bits i can hear the ratchet and also uh, how easy it switch from left to right i've used um crappy stuff and you can tell by the finish inside there for a start, sharp edges, there's horrible, and it's it just feels crap. So, for a start, when you pick a socket up, 
all the letters are nicely done and not half of them missing. So you know that there's, somebody's taken their time to actually make sure that that looks, that looks good. The finish is good. There's no shitty edges. There's dimps in there for the um, ball to sit in. It's a locating ball. That helps it locate in there. Which is handy. It doesn't mm. fly off. Yeah, no. So that's how you would inspect it, to check like the edges, the edges of, of yeah. the finish and how how accurately everything is done, even the writing, even though it doesn't like it doesn't mean anything when you using the tool. No, not at all. Still, but it, it tells about the quality yeah. and somebody actually putting the effort to make it look proper. Yes. That means they put the effort in everything else as well. What what else? Like what what other points you would check? Like imagine you got this tool set for Christmas. No. Imagine you bought it. You imagine saw it online. Imagine somebody got me a set for Christmas. <laughs> you, you imagine. Said... <laughs> you don't have to actually imagine. Oh, okay. Just think, you bought that set of tools. Yeah. Even though you have millions of tools in your drawers. I have. But you, you always need more. Yes. And you decide, oh, that might be good, like in my other garage or like somewhere. Or on the van. Or on the van, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah on out, the go. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Some, something like is. that has everything. You bought it and now you have to inspect that. Yes. And to like, to decide, return it or it's worth the price. I'd go, I'd go straight to the ratchets. Okay, and what would you do? I'll take the camera and I'll film uh, you closer to make sure that people wait. Don't move. Yeah. Okay. I'd go straight to the ratchet. And what would you do with it? Just check it. Yeah, feel there. Feel the paw. There's something in there called a pawl, P-A-W-L. And the, it's, it's just a little trigger that acts on a, a row of teeth around there. Um, what you don't want is a big slappy horrible tonk, 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 tonk. That's quite a nice fine. That's the anyway. That's the first thing I'd go to on all of them. But I think I'm. I think every mechanic is the same. If you if you were to offer them a toolkit, the first thing that they would look at the would be the ratchet. Yeah. Think. Well, what's the ratchet like? A socket's a socket. Yeah. Whether it's made well or not, it's still a socket. But you, a, a tech wouldn't go, oh, let's have a look at the socket. It dives straight for the ratchet. I 100% guarantee you. Trigger's nice. Serviceable all right, because you can take this little pin out. The pour and ratchet comes out. Dab a tiny little bit of oil in it. Oil them as well. People that don't oil ratchets, put oil in them, they'll last forever. If you don't abuse them, put bars on the end of them. They'll last forever. This mm. is it's a good quality tool, and a good quality tool will last forever. So, for somebody like me, you think that kit can be for a lifetime? A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. That's it. I, th I think we can finish the review now. Yeah, we finish it. Yeah, that's it. Job done. <laughs> there are things that you need to look out for on stuff with plastic handles. Is that oil and fuel? You're going to get oil and fuel on that constantly. So you need to keep these clean. Yeah, the first thing I'd go for is the ratchets, definitely. And then the second thing, I'd have a quick look at what other stuff they chuck in. Is any good? Torx is always good. It's quite a good finish on them. UJs or universal joints, they're good for spark plugs or anything that's a bit difficult. Spark plug sockets should have the rubber in them. Yep, they've got a rubber in them. Apart from the plug, the spark plug getting stuck on that, so when you pull it out of the hole or wherever you've got to pull it out, your plug's stuck in there, it also helps you prevent tilt on the socket and actually snapping the ceramic on a spark plug. That's cool. So you've got short reach sockets with Torx bits, quarter drive, three-eight drive, half-inch drive, which is cool, and you've got a full set of deeps, deep reach sockets. The other thing that I've noticed with this kit is that they're all hex, and they're not bi-hex. Bi-hex sockets is twice the amount 
of cutouts, which is good if you've got a small area to get onto, but bihex sockets tend to round. Um, they tend to round up. So I, I actually, I've, although I've got a set of bihex sockets, I prefer and use constantly the hex, the hex sockets. But a full set of deep reach if you've got alloy wheels on your car or whatever. They're quite good. It is, they, they are nicely made, Dee. Dear Monty, sorry. We're learning to use the full names of each other. I never called Simon Sai, but some people do. And Sai in Welsh means diarrhea. And Simon is not very happy to be called diarrhea. So uh, please call him Simon, a full name. And my name is Dimente. I was named after Simon Templar, the saint. Oh, the saint. Do, 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 do. Yeah, not Saint Simon Templar. Simon Templar. Anyway, this kit, yes, I, um, I like it. And yes, I'd love one for Christmas, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna get one. And oh, no, I'm not allowed to enter the competition. Sorry. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna get one there. But I suppose I could just buy You one. can borrow, you can borrow at any time. Or I could just borrow this one. Yeah, you can borrow at any time. Any time you want. Actually, this, saying that, this is good for, this is good for cars. Because you've got a T-bar in there as well. Which is quite handy. So it's good for your car maintenance as well, or Back if you're off. changing things and always doing extend things. It. If I would have still my MX-5, I could use that on MX-5 as well. Yeah. Oh, it's new. They'll loosen up. Your balls are loosen up the more you use them. <laughs> Should we move on to the spanners? We can move to the spanners because it's a very special these are trick. Trick with yeah. spanners that we discovered. Yeah, these are trick. So they are not um, just the ordinary spanners. Finish is good on them again, but straight away, if, as soon as I pick up anything that's got a ratchet on it, <laughs> I'll have a go at what the ratchet's like. And this is not too big or not too small. So you've got, um, it's not horrible and clunky and cheap, but it's not really, really fine. But that's the 19, so I mean, that's. That's usually got, that's usually having some sort of abuse thrown at it somewhere along the line. But the good thing about these ones is that they turn into ratchets. There you are. Turns into a ratchet. Obviously it's one way that way and you have to release it to, to go the, the other, other side, way, yeah. to do the other way. But that's, that's cool, isn't it? And once again, if you, you, you can actually drop a bit, these aren't serviceable, but you can actually drop a little bit of oil around the very edge there. Just a little bit of three in one or something, anything in there will just keep, will help that last. But yeah, once again, if you don't abuse it, if you look after it, it will look I will, after I you. I will. That's lovely. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Like a little mouse. Such a mechanics thing to do, that is. Yeah. Once again, it's got that satin finish on it rather than a chrome finish. Laser written. Mm. Yeah, and then you can take that tray out when you've got your toolbox. Slot that in there, in your toolbox. Anything else you want to know? No, I'm happy. At the point when you said it's going to last me a lifetime, I'm absolutely happy if with that. If you look after it. I will. I will look after it. You know I will. I was looking after your tools. Not like Adam. Yes. Some of them even made them all the way to your house. Yeah, but I brought it back. Eventually. I borrowed it for a show. <coughs> I needed to borrow it for a show. Yes. Because the bike wasn't finished in time. It's still not finished. Penalty of death. The case is quite good as well. It's rubbery, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it opens and closes quickly, yeah. like, like nicely, because I have another set of tools, the uh, uh, Imperial ones for my Harley. Only a little box. And it's a nightmare. I'm breaking, like almost breaking my nails to open it. Sometimes <laughs> I have to ask my son to open it for me because it's so like, it just gets stuck and it's a good company. 
but for some reason it opens very hard. Whereas this one opens easy and I can do it with my nails. Should we do a little test? Not, not test, we already tested it for a few months. Uh, should we do a little demonstration of the tools in use? Can we put something on that bench? Do you want to take the jigsaw out? <laughs> no, it's not heavy, it's a racing bike. It's, it's very light. <laughs> <laughs> I've already started doing some stuff on this. I don't think we're going to use this swing arm. I think we're going to use another one. How many swing arms do you have in the house? Well, we've got lots because we used to race these. This is a stock swing arm, so we'll go with this. We'll probably go with this one. But we're going to mock up with that swing arm for now because I, I, I probably weld this off. OK. Off. Well, you're going to weld it off. Okay. Uh, shock. Shock. Joins it all up. And a pair of wheels. Down there. So that's what we're assembling today? Yeah, we're going to get this into a rolling chassis, take okay. about five minutes. Okay. Um, and then we'll know what we're looking at. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's spin it out of there. You can spin that out of there. I'll get this ready. That's called yep. a castle nut. Castle nut. Yeah, because it looks like the top of a castle. This one? Yeah, look. Yeah, castle nut. Um, got shock linkage under here. Mm. This is all very dirty. You're going to have to clean this. Yeah, okay, well. But shock linkage. That's one thing I learned. Yes. Very well. <laughs> what we do is when when we go to do a final assembly on whatever we're doing, then I'll probably go through how everything works on a shock linkage because there's a there's a ratio, a two to one or of whatever whatever. But it's it's to do with the shock length and the way that the shock works and the way that the bike goes through its arc of suspension when you when you're mid corner. So there's loads of stuff to learn on what shock linkages we're using. We might use a superbike shock linkage on this, which is, has got a slightly different ratio. But it works in conjunction with a shock absorber, works in conjunction with how the swing arm works and falls through its arc, where its starting point is and where it's happy to sit um, mid-corner. But what we're going to learn through this build, as opposed to Jonesy, Jonesy was a lot of... Um, welding, fabricating and making it look good. But this bike, apart from making it look good, because we're going to make it look really good, we'll go through exactly how it works and how it should work. Jonesy didn't have to handle Jonesy, as long as it stopped and went. But th this thing is a completely different kettle mm. of fish and a whole different set of mindset as to how, how we're going to build this bike. A little bit more, yeah. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. Need to punch yep. it, punch it home. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you ratchet on do up. That drops through there. Yep. It doesn't take long to throw a GSX-R together. So I can build these in my sleep. I think Sam, we were racing 600 Super Sport, Sam was running a GSX-R back in the day and he crashed at Paddock Hill Bend, put the bike over the fence at Paddock Hill Bend and we're only 40 minutes from Brands from here. So I had a road bike at home and I got a lift home, jumped on the road bike, rode it back to Brands Hatch. We completely rebuilt the race bike with the road bike chassis because he'd bent the frame overnight. And the next day he was racing. And he raced in the next, yeah. Got it scrutinized at eight o'clock in the morning and we, he was racing it again. But it was, Yep. 
It almost looks like a bike. Yep. Obviously, it's a brake caliper that's got to go in there yet, but. Let's see it go. There she goes. That is so light. That's titanium. I've been told already. Yes, titanium. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to weld in here, weld a panel in here. Mm. We're not using this swing arm, but because but that's the rough idea. But um, that's a, that is rough, but it'll be flush. I don't know about you guys, but I am super excited, super excited about this. And Simon is excited too. <laughs> Uh, there, there is a torque setting for these. Okay. Um, but... We're if, not doing it today. If, no, not today. When you're doing a double bolt on this one, especially on a clamp, do the top one, do the bottom one, do the top one again, do the bottom one again. Because you'll find that once you've done the top one, once you've done the bottom one, the top one will be loose. Mm. Once you've done the top one again, the bottom one will be loose. Until you've reached where it okay. needs to be at. So these need, always need doing twice or, or a couple of times. That'll do you, beautiful. Beautiful. That's it for today? Yeah. That's it, they'll get the idea, won't they? Yeah, yeah. And the idea how the tools looks in natural environment, yeah. but uh, guys, if you want to see... You can't stop standing in front of the camera. What? You can't stand in front of the camera. <laughs> if you want to see tools and use more, like just check the episodes back, I'll maybe pop them in this video so you can you can have a reference of uh, how we used tools and uh, you have to trust Simon because I do <laughs> <laughs> because he has like so much experience that speaks through every single episode of the build and if you don't trust me then you have to trust him yeah. you wouldn't lie no to <laughs> <laughs> No, I get jack shit. I mean, I mean, sometimes you lie like a cheap watch, but uh, you can't lie about this. No, I mean, if truth be told, I'm, I, the, the reason I build bikes for you is because I enjoy building bikes. Um, and I've got time to build bikes. Uh, my semi-retirement has quite worked out as well as I <laughs> thought it was going to work out. Um, you decided but, to semi-retire and I turned up. Yes, yeah, that blew that out of the water. But yeah. no, I, I um, no, there's nothing in it for me other than the fact it's good fun doing it. And you're my mate, and we we have a we have a crack doing it. So, and I enjoy it. Yeah, and um, you can share your experience. I think the main thing is that you can share your experience with um, so many people, not just me. Yeah. But so many people are starting building bikes or getting back to the build because they are inspired and also they start believing that they can do that as well if somebody like me well if we yeah if we inspire one person to to, to do this because it's brilliant fun and um just one person would be good uh, you know our, our job's done then isn't it yeah um i fell out of love with building motorcycles about eight nine years ago and um i left superbike i'd left everything i just had enough of motorbikes and uh, it took something for me to 
to, to come back to it, to come back to bikes. I went off and got a job. <laughs> um, but I, this, it is the love for it. That's what brought me back. It's in my blood. I, 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 I can't put a shelf up, my wife will tell you that. Um, but I can build you a bike out of a shopping <laughs> trolley. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's nothing in it for me. Not even a socket set. We can borrow mine any time. I'll borrow it. I'm going to leave it for you to use. You're going to leave it here? Oh yeah. Right, what are we doing then? Having a cup of tea? We're having a cup of tea. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will not come back to the workshop now for a while because I'm going away. And it will be lots of episodes from a very nice and hot country, from Thailand. Fingers crossed everything will work and I'll get there. I'm going through India and it's a lot of things happening behind the scenes but hopefully in a week's time I will be in Thailand and you'll see episodes from here. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Did you do faces again? No, I was completely serious and you will see that on there. I was completely serious throughout all of that. I see all the things on there. I know. I was serious. I see I say all it the like things this. what you do behind me. Like, I know you. That's, what I, that's exactly how mm. I sat. And then you went, oh, I'm going away for a while. And then I went... I don't know why I said that. I thought that I just have to explain why I'm not building, why Jonesy is not finished, why uh, I'm not that much in here. But, well, then I'll come back. It will be definitely one episode after the other from more from the building because it will be cold in there, especially coming back from the hot Ooh, country. The cold, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, Simon said that this year, because uh, the electricity price is raised up, we're not allowed to use any heaters. So I'll be bringing my heated vest and I'll have to charge it at home as well. So like, I'm not allowed to charge anything and no power tools we're using. Hand drills. Nothing, hand drills. Uh, how about welding? Um. You have to rub the metal together really fast and hope it sticks. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. All right, let's have a cup of tea. <laughs>